Hey everybody, it's me, Generic Pi, and I'm back with another video for you today. And this one is the next round of the 2024 World Tournament, um, where I have been drawn against uh, Mikkel, um, who I have played before on this channel in um, probably one of my favorite videos. Actually, it was it was one called I think it was called um, Wait Something Actually Happened in Eric, kind of that lovely forgotten territory, Eric. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen that, I'll check that one out. Um, I'll put a link to it in the in the, the notes. Um, but yeah, Michal is like a really good player. So <laughs> I wasn't too happy when I saw that he was in the same part of the bracket as I was. Um, I think he's seeded fifth in this tournament. I'm seeded 60th for context. Um, but yeah, really, really nice guy. So uh, yeah, always a pleasure to play him. I think we've only played once, but it was, yeah, it's really fun. Um, so in this one, we started out, decided to go without any tiles. Um, my thinking was, I'd rather go without tiles, um, hope that I can win the shadow game, because Mikkel's like one of the very, very best shadow players. So like my best chance of getting through is to win the shadow game, probably going to lose my free people game, and then try and get as force as many tokens out of him in the third game as possible. I mean, I feel like my best chance of winning the shadow game is going without him having no tokens as free people. So that was my logic in, in pushing for that. Um, will it work out? We will see. Um, so we uh, we went with that, no tokens. Um, I was playing as a shadow in game one. Mikkel was a free people. I started out with Rage of the Dunlendings, a Walrus on tour, which is which is solid. They started out with, well, he started out with um, Imrahil and Wizard Stuff. So if you're going to get Wizard Stuff, yeah, great time to get it, turn one. So I get this slightly awkward roll um, where um, I get three Palantirs and two um, hybrid dice. So on the one hand, it's like, okay, I do have two musters. I can get, um, uh, you know, Saruman, get myself an extra die. However, you know, these are dice I could be using to get armies going as well. Do you just go straight for the, the extra die or do you try and do some? Because otherwise, yeah, I'm not doing any army movement, basically. Um, and that feels insanely slow. Um, but not getting an extra die is also stupidly slow. So it's kind of, yeah, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, very nice roll for, for Michal, um, especially as he has a playable card. Um, so he can he can start card loss cycling as well. Um, I I get way ahead of myself for draw a card. I, I didn't, at the time, I didn't see what it was. Um, it was Pits of Mordor. Um, which I think Sauron has to be at war for Pits of Mordor. So I, I, um, I said I didn't even see the card. Probably was something awesome. So Pits of Mordor would have been kind of awesome, actually. It's a pretty great card. I could have in that in that instance, I probably would have considered foregoing. Um, I might have foregone the extra minion to try and get shit going this turn. Um, I don't know. Would have considered it at least. So then I redraw into the King is Revealed after Mikkel passes anyway. King is Revealed. Yeah. He plays with the stuff. Um, which given, I'm probably going to block any chance from getting turn one off the white anyway. Pretty great. Yeah, this will isn't going to, like, I'm just not going to let it happen. So you wouldn't get to use this will to get Gandhi. So it's actually the perfect time to, to get with the stuff with three movement. Um, and if, if he's lucky enough to not get revealed, he can get that third movement into to Mario as well. Draws into there is another way. Um, I draw another card. Um, what I should have done here is I should have done something else because I've realized now that um, I should have just waited till he moved once and then played War with Soren Toil with one of these Palantirs. This is the perfect time to play War with Soren Toil, but you have to wait until they move at least once. Um, so they don't declare back into Rivendell. Um, I've just realized he could have actually gone for turn one Aragorn here, couldn't he? If he so desired, um, decided not to in this instance. There is a chance that doing this makes him use the... Yeah, but having said that, I probably could have just played it anyway. <laughs> because is he really not going to move at all with these three dice? Um, anyway, I could have done the turn order slightly differently anyway. Um, so yeah, that was a mistake on my part. Um, he moves... Why is it doing this? Don't do this. I hate it when you do this game. Um, and is missed. I put Isengard down one. He moves again. 
um, is missed. I play Rage of the Dunland Dings, for which I needed to get Isengard to war. So yeah, should have been in a slightly different order. Rather than drawing another card, I should have played Warmaster on Toil. Then I should have played War Rage of the Dunlings with the, with the final Palantir. Um, he moves again. This time he's hit, and now we can play Wizard Stuff. So yeah, amazing first turn for, for Mikkel. Um, I get the Evil Wizard. And uh, Mikkel draws into King Brandsman and Gua here. And I draw into the Ring of Mine and Hill Trolls. Um, so we get this roll. So good chance of Mikkel getting Gandalf the White here. Can move once, use a ring to move twice, and then probably get get Gandhi with, uh, with the will. For me, um, this is a great roll. Really happy with this roll. Um, I can... I have a think about what my options are. Um, assess my my options, um, and I decide my best bet is to um, now that I've got this army relatively buffed up and I've got hill trolls. I'm thinking, okay, maybe this army alone with an extra muster can actually be enough to get Lorien. So because of that, I think I'll actually send this army up here. And with this dice roll, I can send this army up here and get the Witch King by going for the north. Um, so, and also, you know, do some setup moves with the other, because um, he hasn't got any any hybrids. If he uses the, the will to do a hybrid move, then I'm very, very happy. I don't think he will. Um, but yeah, I think that's quite a nice use of these dice. Um, so Mikkel moves, is safe. I get Sauron to war. Um, I say to ring or not to ring. Mikkel passes. I start moving armies around to get this the Baradur army into place. Um, decides to use the ring, which I would certainly do if I were in Mikkel's shoes. I miss again. So not a good start for the Shadow on the Hunt. Um, I go into um, Old Forest Road, and I decide to go this way. So I had an interesting chat on the... Um, on the Discord server with, with Ace um, the other day. Um, and he was talking about how having watched Rompsteel, um, I'm sure everyone knows Rompsteel's channel is awesome, um, but if anyone doesn't, go check it out. Um, Rompsteel kind of put him onto a, a method, a and I've done this myself before, but like often more is kind of a, not intentionally necessarily, it's more been like a organic thing. But when you send this army up north, you can send this army up here and um, kind of do a multi... It's a multitude of things. So you can send this army going for Lorien, but by doing so, you can kind of threaten Minas Tirith because you go through Druidan, and you can, if it's possibility, you can go into Helm's Deep if this is open and it's convenient. And then if it isn't, then you can just go up to Lorien anyway. So I thought, um, let's do that shit. <laughs> no time like the present. Let's give that a go. Seems like a good option. And I do have all these kind of... Um, well, actually, no, I don't have any extra half movements because I'm committed to the, the North strategy now. Go for Carrick. A card and a card. Uh, Mikkel gets a hit. I don't roll any fives. Not a single five. Um, which is really awkward, actually. And I'll explain why in a minute. Because this sets in with a, kind of a series of things into motion. Because um, now... Mikkel obviously plays King Brandsman, which is like probably the perfect card for this situation because it puts me in a very awkward position. Um, on the one hand, it also gets him to draw into two more cards, which is amazing um, because he's still got Gandhi in the Fellowship. And it just kind of shits on all my plans because on the one hand, it, all, it makes sacking Dale really awkward. Because now it's really buffed and there's a very strong chance that Dale skulks back into the Woodland Realm. Um, I don't think he's got a... He might have a Scouts. He could very well have a Scouts. Especially if he's drawn into two cards. So if he's got a Scouts, then that really sucks. Um, if he doesn't have a Scouts, he could just like mash up my army, which is already very small. Um, and he could end up with three guys in the leader in the Woodland Realm, which would be nightmarish. Also... Now, if I attack into Dale here with this army, he can then use the will to do two half army movements and get this here, which means he can take Dolgaldor next turn. So 
I'm like, there's maybe even a consideration that I don't even attack into um, Dale now. Because if I attack into Dale, I'm basically giving up a stronghold to the free people, which is going to be annoying. Um, but then I think about it a bit more, and I realize that if I don't attack into Dale, then what Mikkel can do with the will instead is get the north to war manually. Because the north should be at one step away, because I took Carrick and, and, and it's a settlement. And then he can muster into Dale first thing next turn, which sucks almost as much as losing Dolgador, probably more, and I won't even get the Witch King. So I'm like, all right, every option here is terrible. I hate this situation, but I think the best of a bad bunch is still my original plan, which is to attack into Dale and to um, and to get into... Because I, I sense that if I do this, he's, he could use the will. He might not, but he could use the will to go here and, um, and get Dolgador. But I'm like, let's just do it. So I go for it. Um, he says King Brands was huge. Yeah, such a great card for that situation. And I'm specifically targeting Dale on the of all the places on the board. Um, I look at my cards. I feel like I have to play a card. I decide to play, because I'm also going to have to give up a card if I don't play a card this round anyway. So I go for the Relentless Assault and figure I'll just take one hit. And then hopefully I can hit him on fives and take down, get some hits against him. Um, because nothing else is, is good here. Um, so I do that. Take the one hit. Take, kill my elite. And I get three hits. So that's great. That's like an amazing outcome. He only gets one hit back, even with the reroll. So considering how badly that could have gone, that was a very that was an excellent outcome. This could have gone it's gone not as well as I hoped, but uh yeah, I mean when you think about it, other than the card redraw, uh, um this yeah, getting the muster into Dell didn't actually really do that much to the free people at all. So yeah, good outcome. Does mean the Northrop War, though, and this guy is in a dangerous area. He decides not to get this guy into here, though. Um, and to be honest, given how healthy the Fellowship is and the fact that he wants to kill Gandhi, I think that's a very, very, very reasonable play, probably in terms of winning the game. The smart play. Um, I do get two sixes. Could have, in a weird sense, do you actually want to get a hit here? <laughs> like, maybe I don't want to kill, I don't want to actually hit the Fellowship. Um, I get an eye, so that's nice. I get two hits on an eye. Uh, Gandhi dies, Strider comes in, um, and I draw another tile, and I get a three, so that's good. Um, and Mikkel decides to eat the three. I get my Witch King, and I decide to send him here, because this ain't going to take down Wooden Realm anytime soon. Um, this army isn't going to be ready to take Lorien for a while. Certainly not. It might be able to put it under siege soon, but I'm not going to be ready to attack Lauren for a little while. So this army is going to be the one that's going to be marching across the board. I need the Witch King there, where I'm actually going to get some rerolls from him and do some stuff with him. So that's where I send him. Um, Mikkel gets I will go alone and Dane. What do you discard here? Tricky one. Good hand. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one of these three mustering cards. Um, yeah. Well, maybe, I'd, pro I'd probably get rid of I will go alone, actually. Let's see what he gets for Insult and Riddler. Yeah, I'll go alone. Yeah. Um, and I draw Pits of... Oh, wait. Did I already have Pits? Oh, yes, that's the card I drew at the beginning of the game. <laughs> By accident. Okay. So I've got Pits of Mordor. And I've got uh, Foul Thing from the Deep. And I get this fantastic, amazing, su superb roll. So I cannot complain at all. Um, Mikkel gets a great roll, though. He's having up two on wills, so certainly not lacking the will department. Gandhi will come in on turn three, which is which is strong for the three people, especially given they're on, you know, effectively six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six movement on two turns. Um, they hide. I straight away need this. I don't want them to get as, like, I want them to have to use these to hide as well. So I want to play Foul Thing. Play Foul Thing, get a zero reveal. That's fine. Would rather hurt them, but um, would be happy to hurt them, sorry, if I can get like a two reveal or something like that. But a reveal is the main thing I was looking for there, so that's cool. Um, what do I do here? Start moving armies. I'm really hoping he doesn't have Faramirs as well after all those redraws he had. That would really, really, really suck and make the threat of a, you know, a military foray into, you know, defend, you know, a counter offensive into Minas Morgul much more of a threat. Also making defending Minas Tirith much more easy for them. Um, but thankfully, he doesn't, plus these wills are extremely valuable for him this turn, so 
Um, so yeah, so I'm doing kind of moving this army and doing other moves across the board at the same time. Little flips. I move here and here. So um, getting armies into position. The other great thing with moving this army across is you can get them onto the fellowship and get rerolls using this this big big army as well. So you're kind of you're going one the exact opposite direction as the fellowship, which is another benefit of it. Um, Mikkel passes. I thought you might move then, but these dice are precious actually, um, and maybe defending in this instance is more important. Um, so. I do two moves, getting this ready, ready this army up here ready to get into Dale and combine with this once I can get the Southrons to war. Um, I now decide this army, as per my original plan, I can use, um, you know, Pits of Mordor, Hill Trolls, etc. to get this buffed up, and then I can use that to take down Lorien. Um, and this army, I'm going to get a cheap... Keep Rohan with this army. So I decide to, yeah, make sure I take Fold um, with one die, move the rest of the army, leave one Nazgul behind so I can get an extra reroll, which is good. Gandhi comes into play. I go for Edoras first because I know that um, even if they are at war, like what's what's Mikkel going to do with that, with a will? Either he doesn't move the Fellowship, which I'm cool with, but like, you either move this army in here or you muster in here. Either way, like, it's not enough for me to... I'm, I'm still going to get a really, really weak Helm's Deep to attack. So I'm not really worried about getting Rohan to war in this situation, which is a, a pleasant... You know, not usually the case. Usually that's that you're really, really concerned about it. But because of the dice situation, it's actually pretty nice. And I do have the extra die to get Helm's Deep under siege with the next die. Safe in the knowledge you can't run away and great mischief. So I attack. Let's have a look at the cards. Um, what would you play here? I played... Um, what did I play? Desperate Battle. Played Desperate Battle against a charge. Since I've literally walked past Minas Tirith without putting it under siege, I think Mikkel's thinking I don't need to hold on to Guards of the Citadel too much. Not like a huge, hugely important card, especially when you're stacked. You have a stacked hand anyway. Imra Hill's more of a, you know, important to defend with, uh, with these guys looming. Um... So let's see what happened in the combat. Um, yeah, it's a one hit. Nice. Um, I get one back. Oh, yeah, because I'm doing Desperate Battle, so I, I just totally wipe it out. Um, so that's fine. That's good. Uh, Mikkel uses the will to... Okay, to threaten the take of Dolgador. And I'm like, you can have it. I just think, given how fast the Fellowship's going, I need to... I, I just I can't use a wit ring to muster here now, and also give him the chance to muster in Helm's Deep, which would mean this army wouldn't probably be strong enough to take this. I need just to take down Helm's Deep with this specific army, ASAP. And if he gets two victory points, he gets two victory points. Could screw me up, could mess me up, but there's not an obvious route to two more victory points on the board. Um, you know, Gondor is Gondor has a it's a reason. Well, I wouldn't say it's that open. There's 10 HP in Mordor, um, but you know, Gondor's nowhere near war. I can get this ready to defend if I need to. This army's very strong. I mean, I'd be careful around using Corsairs if I do if it does come to that. Um, and there's not really anywhere else he can get the VPs. You know, maybe if he starts mustering in the north, he can go up to Gundabad. Like, but there's not. A clear route to to four so i'm not i'm like let's just worry about that later i've got to prioritize getting some victory points on the board um Mikkel draws into path of the woeses um and elven rope um and i draw into the ring racer abroad and new powers rising so that's kind of opportune um fellowship's okay roll a bunch of eyes um Mikkel rolls a bunch of movements so that kind of works out in my favor um, you know, you want the eyes against the, the big chunks of movement. He understandably takes this and then moves this guy across. So this serves two purposes. You know, it threatens taking Angmar and also threatens to defend Rivendell, um, which with this army on six is a, is a concern. You do want to defend that. Um, if, if you can, with, uh, with the, with the, the elves nowhere near war yet. Um, what did I do here? 
I did two armies. I wanted to get some an extra reroll on the fellowship. Um and I did two army moves. Otherwise I would have just had to attack with uh with a so maybe that's a little bit slow. Maybe I don't I should have just uh Yeah, I think maybe I'm being a bit greedy, trying to get two rerolls on the fellowship there. One's enough. So uh perhaps a bit a little bit of a waste, although I did still get this army up here. Um so not not the end of the world. Um Mikkel moves. It's uh I do get a hit on the reroll, and it's a zero reveal, so the reveal is the key thing there. This means that Mikkel cannot get into Mordor this turn. Not sure if he would want to against this many eyes, to be honest. It'd be pretty brutal. Um you're gonna get hit on every move. Um but the reveal is, is crucial. I go to Helm's Deep, no time to move dudes around, strengthen this, just need to try and get it down. Um ASAP. Can't 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 waste any time here. Um, let's look at the cards. I went for. I don't want to use the Great Host, even though this is a well, not quite yet, but at some point this could be a good card for this combat. Um, okay, so I actually make a mistake here. I played Devil of Ball thing. This is because ninety nine percent of the well, at least ninety five percent of the time when you attack into Helm's Deep, you have at least one Isengard unit in the in the in the battle. So it was almost just like muscle memory. I was just like, I'm attacking Helm's Deep. I'll play Devry of Orthanc. So neither of us notice it straight away. It doesn't end up impacting things because I rolled two sixes anyway. Um, Mikkel rolls uh, no hit, so that's lucky. So that's been great for me. I press draw, uh, draw into another Devry of Orthanc, which I then proceed to play. Um, and it's then, I don't get any hits with it. And then Mikkel realizes, like probably because I played it the second time around, like, hey, that's um, illegal. Um, so what we do is we go back, because technically what you're meant to do in this situation is the Shadow player is meant to retract the card, you play the round as if the Shadow player hadn't played a card, and then obviously and that, the way it would have worked out exactly the same, because I rolled two sixes, so the combat was still valid. However, I did get a redraw, so that shouldn't have, I shouldn't have got a redraw from the Witch King, because I didn't play a card effectively in that round. So we discussed this. And we go back to host the first round of combat, but without me getting a redraw. I press, and I don't play a card this time, because... Um... Oh yes, yeah, so I've got the original Devry of Orthanc back. I've lost, I haven't got the second Devry of Orthanc. I could have played a great host here, but my plan now, following this, is to play... So this, this card is crucial to my plan. My plan is to play New Paris Rising, combine the remainders of these two armies to go and take Lorien, and then send the rest of this with Moria up to take Rivendell, and then try and do a triple pincer on all three of the Elven strongholds. That's my plan. To do that, a New Paris Rising is the it's the only it's it's the most crucial card I could possibly have. So there's no way I'm using that in combat. So I just have and the other cards don't work. So I have to go no card. And luckily this round, I actually get better dice than on the invalid round. So I get my six. So that's really, really handy. Uh, Mikkel hides. I don't like using hybrids to play cards, but I have to because it's it's integral to make the most of these other two dice. Um, Mikkel. Now Mikkel goes for Aragorn, actually. I was quite surprised at this. I know that this is a horrible fit situation, but I was thinking like, the Fellowship's moving so fast, you're going to get into Mordor next turn. Um, do you need Aragorn? Is, is Strider's speed more valuable than Aragorn? Um, at this point, the extra die would help, but you need a few turns for that to kind of even out in terms of speed and of, of movement of Fellowship. So I wasn't too fussed about this. I was like, okay, that's, I'm cool with that. Kind of, kind of... If anything, slightly pleasantly surprised. I mean, it's never nice to see the Fellowship on six, the three people on six dice, but I was like, mm, no, no. Um, I say, interesting. Um, Legolas takes over, and I start my com combo. Um, Aragorn is crowned. I start the march. I move these guys up here, prepping to... Um, because I'm worried that there's there's a there's a possibility that this would lead to, you know, this getting massively mustered up with him already on two victory points. Now I'm like there's some alarm bells ringing about is 
Uh, Aragorn charge into Mordor a possibility? If so, I need to get this army slightly closer to the action for when I do get the South Rons to war. Um, and there's even the outside chance of me, you know, I probably wouldn't, but I could potentially look at getting Minas Tirith under siege if the opportunity arises and trapping him in there and maybe maybe getting, uh, you know, get him, getting Mikkel back down to five dice. Right. So Mikkel draws into um, Ents and Kirdan ships. So all the cards for defending Dolamroth. Um, and an Ent card that I left four in here. Maybe I'm being a little bit... Um, little bit careful but I really I kind of need this leadership in here at the moment um, and I'm also slightly concerned about him sending Gandalf somewhere so I'm thinking you know having a couple of extra leadership would be more valuable um, if he has. and also I've had two games recently which have involved heavy end multiple end usage so um, it's fresh in my mind <laughs> so yeah I, I, I don't want to take the risk um, right so and I draw into Morgul Wound and the Shadow's moving. I decide to kill the Morgul Wound. I'm kind of prioritizing military at this point. I feel like Morgul Wound isn't a card that slows down the Fellowship. Um, I don't think I'm going to win a Corruption game this game. Um, other my other cards, I feel like I'm more useful. The Every Vorthank has a direct combat usage because this army is going to have Ice Guard units in it. Um, and all the other cards are, yeah, strong. I haven't really found the time to play War Missile and Toil. Um, I should have played that much earlier just to get it on. I mean, he hasn't taken many casualties. Um, you know, Strider left and Gandalf was killed. More free cards. I would have potentially killed Gua here. There is another way of Elven Rope. So good cards to have killed. I could have killed one of those, I think, I'm sure, at some point. Probably Gua here. Um, I get a very movement heavy turn, but no musters, which is a bit awkward because I really want this is the point where I really want to get the South Ones to war. Uh, and I've you don't want you ideally want to use your hybrids for military purposes rather than mustering purposes for army kind of purposes. So I've only had two normal musters all game. Um, did use them to get Sauron to war and stuff and get the Witch King, but um, but yeah, you kind of this you can there's a point you usually want at least one turn kind of early to mid game where you get like three musters and you can just kind of do all that muster mustering administration. That you need to get done uh, to get that out of the way. And then <laughs> Mikkel rolls like almost the perfect roll given I can't, literally cannot get, you know. Interestingly, if I did have Day Without Dawn and two uh, musters, I could guarantee to kill two. Here, wait, he'd play one. If he'd have to play, f I could, st even if I, I could still kill at least one, one will. <laughs> Um, wait, what would it be? Muster, muster. He'd play two by that point. He'd play the third. Then I'd play Day Without Dawn. So, yeah. Um, I think I could still kill two, actually. Is that right? Wild. That's insane. Yeah, so pretty great roll. Pretty, pretty nice roll. Um, so let's it's safe to say the Fellowship are going to get into Mordor this turn. Um, that sure is something. Um, draw three. I actually draw two early. Um, but then I roll and then I do hit, and then I get an even better tile. So that's great, but not great enough. There was a part of me that was thinking like, oh shit, with all this, is he going to be able to like muster Rohan, sorry, muster Gondotor, and then like attack into Minas Morgul or something? Um, especially going to have no musters. But I do have a ring up my sleeve, um, and if he does that, he's foregoing getting into Mordor. So I'm like, it's not really, I don't think Mikkel's really going to do that. So I just continue focusing on my military strategy. Um, because of the nature of my dice, I need to have armies. I need this army, this group of dudes, to have at least one leader in them so that I can make the use of the character dice to get Rivendell under siege. So I do need to move Nazgul around at some point. So I do that now so I can at least get one reroll on, on Mikkel and also get this um, one guy in here. You'll see why in a minute. <laughs> Uh, Mikkel passes, I stop moving armies around, accidentally give Gandalf a little ride to Path Celebrant. Um, Mikkel flips the Fellowship, I start combining armies up here. Uh, miss the Fellowship, I miss. Really not having a good hunt here, uh, overall. Um, combine armies again, 
So this is this is a small but significant error. So I moved this army up here, and I was like, what should I do with the second move? And in the end, I can't think of anything, so I think, okay, this extra HP getting this in here could be useful against Lorien, because, you know, this army isn't that big. It's like it was 10 HP against 5 HP. That's never a guarantee. So having making 11 HP against 5 HP is good. Um, don't really have another usage for it. I did consider the fact that, you know, he could get this army here um, and could potentially threaten two things at once. If he gets his army here, he's threatening getting into Rivendell and also getting into Moria. So I'm like, hmm, how can I stop that? I could potentially, you know, leave a guy behind in Holland. But I need all the dudes I can get to get into Rivendell. So eventually I decide uh, not to do that. And I'm just like, I don't. But then Mikkel does an excellent move. Really, really excellent move. Um, so, so this move, that wouldn't have been excellent. That would have been okay. Um, this still would have been good because this does, as I said before, it does two things. If I, you know, put this under siege, which I would have done. Uh, you can then move that that here with the next move, which means I have to use a ring to muster, and it slows down my military quite significantly. Um, but what Mikkel does is even better, is Mikkel moves one guy out here. So now I'm in a bind whereby I cannot put Rivendell under siege um, without him getting Moria, and if he gets Moria, he wins the game because he's already on two victory points. So this is a such a good move. This is what like the top shadow players do. Little moves like this that throw you off. So if I'd I did in retrospect, if I'd read it, which I didn't, I would have um I could have what I could have done is I couldn't this army couldn't get to here and, and I couldn't have blocked him with the Demon Dale move. What I could have done is moved nine of this army to here and one of this army to here, which means that there's no way for him to defend Rivendell with this army because it's blocked. And then because the army's in Ettenmores, there's no convenient route for it to get down to Moria either because Trollshaws is the crucial crucial spot because it does it has three points it has rivendell as a point holland as a point and ettenmores as a point if you take away troll shores it can't defend rivendell and it can't get down to moria or threaten getting down to moria but i didn't read it and so i'm then forced to use a ring now um to get an elite into moria um and then this excellently allows him to take this guy back again which i think is the right thing to do as well with the other half movement and get this into rivendell so excellent play by Mikul. That's why he's such a strong player. Um, I get Rivendell under siege with my... Um, and I, pr I prioritise Rivendell first because, you know, I was thinking there's an outside chance that he now plays power too great, which would really screw me up. And if there's one of these I really, really don't want to get mustered a little bit more, it's Rivendell because this one is the one that's hanging on the balance. If he has Kindred, I think I'm screwed, effectively. I just think the 10 cannot take the 8. It's just not enough. So I need this one to go well. Um, he's already made it a much harder proposition with the, the third elite. Um, so yeah, Rivendell was priority number one, Lorien priority number two. I was this I, the one thing I was I was disappointed about was that the fact that I didn't get to do a triple pivot in one turn. I've always I'd always that's I think that's just such a badass play to put Rivendell, Lorien, and Woodland Realm under siege all in the same turn with character dice. It's just like, I don't know. It's like some chef's kiss shadow play for me. So I didn't quite get to do it. Um, but I... Uh, oh yeah, so anyway, I'm getting a bit carried away. So Mikkel moves with the Fellowship, um, draws an, uh, an uh, one reveal, um, and then the second tile gets revealed into Miss Morgan, the second tile's an eye. So um, that's pretty great, to be honest. Um and then I put Lauren in the siege. Um, they draw, they draw through a day and a night, and has the stewards. So going to be a confusion realistically, unless you do something with this guy. 
Pro Stand, and I draw Palantir and Daylight Dawn. I have a think about what I want to kill here, and I figure that Devry of Orthanc is actually more valuable to me than Cruel as Death in this battle, because A, it's going to cycle back into um, strategy cards, which is what I'm looking for, and um, it doesn't require me sacrificing to Nazgul leadership, so this army doesn't have much leadership, so I actually ultimately decide the other cards I want to keep. Um, I'm hoping to play war like Warmest on Toil at some point. Um, so yeah, I, I end up prioritizing uh, Devry of Orthanc over Cruel as Death, which normally I wouldn't do. Um, but yeah, I think it's too late for Palantir to actually, you know, realistically impact this game for me. I do roll through Palantirs though. Um, bunch of eyes. I kind of this turn, I really wanted like a ton of attacks. My attacks must be high though. This game. Yeah, I'm plus six on attacks. It's felt like I've been high on attacks despite that low, very low first turn. Um, so I had to end somewhere. Um, Plus five on movement, though, for the free people, so that's pretty banging. Um, yeah, turn five, Mordor. It's, it's not bad when you've also crowned Aragorn and didn't move for a single turn, for an entire turn. Um, so it's looking pretty bad. I kind of think... I kind of need to win the game this turn, <laughs> in my mind, given that he's got six dice. So I'm thinking, I don't think I, I, don't think I can win with this turn, so, but I'm going to try and win the game this turn. I do instantly make a mistake, though. Um, I get a bit... I start overthinking things. Um, and I, I think when you're literally taking three strongholds at once, um, if this can be confusing... I also... The other thing about this roll that sucks is that I didn't get two musters. I really wanted two musters so I could get the South Runs and Eastings to War. If I hadn't used my ring last turn, I could have done that. The reason being that it's so important is to um, get this army in here so I've got a better chance of taking Woodland Realm. I do have Hill Trolls, which will significantly increase the chance of this army taking Willem Realm, but it's still a teeny tiny army, and even with Hill Trolls, it's only going to be four dice. Um, yeah, I, I think it's... And I don't really... If I had, like, a Deadly Strife, I would feel a lot more confident. But I don't have a Deadly Strife. I haven't drawn a Deadly Strife, so it's not... Like, you could kind of have a bit of a freak takeout. Well, not, to be honest, it's not even that unlikely. If you have four... You know, eight dice, you need three hits. But anyway, what I should have done... So anyway, yeah, so Mikkel flips. I played the ring as mine, get the red tile in there. Um, Mikkel moves, it's a two. With Legolas. Um, and I see if I'm in the South Eastern at war. And I get distracted, I get distracted. So I should have used this seed die to put this under siege straight away. That should have been priority number one, because if that gets an extra elite in it, then I'm in trouble. Um, I think... I was kind of, I, I got a bit distracted um, and was thinking, ah, oh, you know, maybe I'll wait before I move this army get this army in there. So I'll wait until the next turn. Cause I'm, I just, I'm kind of thinking I'm probably not going to be able to win the game this turn. It needs a really very unlikely, but it doesn't matter. You should get Woodland Realm under siege straight away. So that was an, I think that's, that's, that's two mistakes I've made this game that could prove costly is not playing Warmest on Toil turn one. And this here, not getting Woodland Realm in the Siege with, with that character die. Should have done that straight away this turn, after I put the Red Tide in. So I get distracted, go for Lorien. Um, I am also thinking, I'm, I am worried about uh, him having power too great. So now I play my Devry of Orthanc, finally. Get one hit, he gets one hit back. So his, his defensive dice have been pretty bad, to be fair. Um, I press, draw into Monsters Roused. I was thinking, like, Monster's Rush could be kind of handy up here to get a little bit of a reinforcement, because this army ain't going to look good. But I'm also like, eh. i got to take... i just got to take shit down. <laughs> like, so... I do also have the Hill Trolls up my sleeve, potentially, for this. And, you know, if I probably use Hill Trolls here and use this army to buff up this. That was probably my thinking. Um, so I decide to use the, uh, the Desperate Battle straight away. I get three hits... Mikkel gets one hit. So Mikkel, yeah, his dice have been trash. I press, no card, and I get my six. So that's gone well. I'm up to six victory points. So in theory, if I attack this, if I use this die, so you play Ring Race Abroad and attack Rivendell, if I take it down in one, somehow, without any bloody elite, actually, that's not even possible. You can't even take it down in one because there's six HP. So I can't do that. So... 
Yeah, so I can't I can't win the game this time because of that. There's one too many HP in there. So that's kind of why the troll shorts thing would have been so good. Um, that's another error. So that's a much smaller error because that was born of like an excellent piece of play by Mikkel. I had I like you know I don't think many people would read that play, um, but in future I will try to. Because um, if I'd read that, then I would have been the big brain guy. I, alas, I am not. <laughs> I'm the small brain guy. Um, so. So yeah, so um, they put Elven Rope in, giving me all these chances to put this under siege, so, but I don't. I then play Rings of Broad, going straight for the Jugular, going for Rivendell. Um, I'm also worried about Kindred as well, so that would really screw me up. Um, so go for the Relentless Assault. This is the only card that can help me here in any way. I just need a really good, lucky Relentless Assault. Kill two guys, and I get... Four hits. I somehow say five. I don't know how I got five there. And just obviously just my brain is not working correctly. Miko gets one and I say well four minus one. And I miss a reroll. And I get four minus one. So three hits in total. Which all things considered is very good. Um more than I would have expected. Um, and uh I do my Witch King draw into Olokai. Which is handy. Um, he hides the fellowship. Oh, he moves the fellowship. Sorry, uh, and it's one tiles. So that's two two non-reveal tiles when you've got this this many companions in there. Um, okay, there are one, two. When at the start of the of Mordor, there were one, two, three, four. There were six six good tiles. Become seven since he's put Elven Rope or whatever the hell it is in there. Elven Rope, yes. Um, but there are also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bad tiles, seven reveals of various kinds. So um, kind of a coin toss every time he moves, more give or take, and decreasing odds every time of, of, of not getting revealed. Um, but that's a great start. Um, draws Gimli because he wants to get down to Gollum ASAP, especially because he has heroic death. Sorry, no, there's another way. And I say, hmm, need you to have an apocalyptic roll next turn, or looks like GG. Because the way I just, I know I can't win this turn anymore, um, because the way it's gone, I don't think I'm not sure if it's ever possible technically, um, barring a, a, a gen like a proper miracle. Um, or may, uh, yeah, I'm not, it might have just been completely logistically impossible. I'm not sure. But I'm like, okay, well, I want to take down Rivendell this turn in case he does draw into. Um, Kindred, so play Hill Trolls. Should have bloody used this guy to get this under siege. Um, and then he musters in the Elder um, Wooden Realm, finally. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm dumb. I meant to attack Wooden Realm ages, ages ago to prevent that. Now I do it. Um, he uses the ring to move, understandably. And it's another of the perfect tiles. Unbelievable. Three out of three so far when there are six in there. So that's going great. Who needs Strider? Smooth Mordor, I say. Um, and now I finally get the South Runs close to war. We go on to turn number seven. Um, so yeah, three non-reveals. Pretty amazing. I don't know what the odds are there, but it must be... Yeah, I mean... Especially given this wasn't even... Was this in the very beginning? I don't think this was in. It was in early on. I can't remember if he moved first. No, he hid first. I put the red tile in. I can't remember if he moved before he put Elven Rope in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's been at least... A co it's been a coin toss every time. So three coin tosses have gone his way. Um, well, yeah. And then more than a coin toss. And if it just hit an eye, if it hit an eye on that third move, um, it would have been what, like six? I think it would have been six reveal, five reveal. So that would have killed the hobbits. Uh, it would have it would have just put him up here into the kind of realm where two bad tiles could have tipped him over the edge. But no eyes. If it just hit one eye, I think I would have had an outside shot. As it is, given I don't really have any useful cards. Um, because I draw into Cruel Weather and Half Orcs. I'm like, well, I kind of need a red tile into an eye. 
to even have a chance here because you know, I mean, okay, I can fish, I can go fishing. Ah, convenient. The other non-revealed tile. Um, one of the three remaining non-revealed tiles. So that's that's good. I'm like, yeah, it looks like GG. Um, Mikkel considers using Golem's ability, decides not to. I'm drawing, hoping for, you know, in case he hits the red and um, I can then have another bite. Yeah, because if he hits the red, he's pushed back here, revealed. Maybe I could then get, I don't know, like a, when he can hide and then I can throw a orc, orc troll or something like that at him. Um, to try and, well, it's not going to be particularly valuable now. <laughs> it's good. I don't think anything's going to be good. But I could maybe hit like a two and get him up here so then maybe eyes kill him or something like that. Um, he plays there as the way. Draws a one. <laughs> so like... Oh, man. I mean, I, it, I've had some... Um, I've had a lot of luck recently a Shadow drawing some into red tiles. And I think I just got the kind of inverse of all that luck in this game. Um, I just, <laughs> like, Mikkel just got, like, the absolute dream Mordor. Two turns, no reveals. When there were quite a lot of reveals still in the pool. Um, yeah. I mean, I think odd, odds are that he probably, you know, if, if you if you balance it out, the way, the way the game had gone, he probably should have needed three turns in Mordor, certainly, without Strider, with such a big... Even with six dice, you'd, you'd expect, I think, probably three three moves. Or at least the point where, like, it sh he, you know, an eye makes it uncomfortable so then Mikkel doesn't doesn't risk moving the third time on ter the first turn in Mordor. Um, although I think he... Did he use the ring the first turn? I think he did use a ring the first turn. So maybe he wouldn't use the ring, which means he had more turn the second turn. Um, or it would have just made it more risky for him because, you know, I could... This turn, I could have won one militarily. Certainly could have won militarily. I think I'd take down Rivendell, get this army over to here. Woodland Realm, I've made a mistake, so Woodland Realm's a bit stronger. But so what? One to get uh, Southrons to war, two armies to combine. Um... If I need to get an extra elite in here, I can use one of the these to get Olokai. I've got a ring. So I'm the thing I'm very, very likely to take down Rivendell in one go. Um she ha It might have been slightly tight. It might have been slightly tight given I'm gonna have to move leadership across. So what would it be? One die to attack, one to move leadership, two to move this across. One to do Olokai, and then one using a ring to attack into it to kill it. Um, if that all goes to plan, which I think it, I think odds are, I think I've got an excellent chance of winning the game militarily this turn. So if and that's just, and you know what, like that's a set to turn seven, which is already a very fast military. I could have won it in turn six military, but uh, didn't quite didn't quite have the the dice to do it. Um, but perfect Mordor. And those tiny little mistakes. I'm not sure if it was enough to stop me, to be honest. I think with Mordor that good, I'm not sure there's much you can do. Um, if it drawn this blue tile, then you can make a strong argument that the War Missile and Toil really screwed me. And as, as it was, you know, like I could have also, I probably would have killed there as another way at some point. Um, as it was, that didn't make the slightest bit of difference. So, like, 100%, you know. A huge mistake on my part to not play Warmer Soren Toil, but because of the way the game worked out, I don't think it actually made a difference to the outcome. But it very, very easily could have. The There is Another Way could have been what won in the game. Well, that's quite often the case because it gets you that Palantir movement. Um, but yeah, the plus four movement, the terrible hunt rolls through most of the game, the incredible tiles in Mordor, and just, yeah, some excellent play from Mikkel. Just, uh, did it for me, really. So, yeah, I think it's a combination of, of, of yeah, bad luck on my part, in some respects, and some small misplays. Um, but, yeah, thanks for the game. I'll put round two up here soon as well, in which I have to beat one of the best Shadow players in the world, as three people. So, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> see you later, everyone. Bye-bye.